Hey, 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 what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel, where we dig deep into the juiciest mysteries and unravel the hidden truths of the entertainment world. I'm your host, and oh boy, today do we have a wild ride for you. But before we jump in, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our mind-bending content. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming up. Now, let me set the stage for you. We're diving headfirst into the whirlwind surrounding none other than the queen of daytime talk, Wendy Williams. Yeah, you heard me right. From industry expose to secrets that could shake Hollywood to its core, we're diving into it all. But hold on tight, because we're not just here to talk. Oh no, my friends, we're in for a treat. Stick around because we've got some reaction videos queued up for you. We're diving into the raw and filtered reactions that have been swirling around Wendy's latest documentary, dissecting industry secrets and peeling back the layers of mystery that shroud Wendy Williams' recent journey. So grab a seat and let's get started. So I just got done watching this Wendy Williams documentary on Lifetime. And I don't know, I just was like, I, I had to talk to somebody about it. And it's 11.30 at night, so I'm not calling any of my friends right now. And I don't I don't even know where to start with the documentary but for now where I'd like to start is talking about the people who are currently in her life meaning the manager the publicist the other management people the producers on Lifetime <clears throat> and all of that what in the entire thing I first of all who, who is this manager guy what was he managing Part of me feel now. Let me backtrack. Part of me feels like he could possibly actually care about Wendy because he does try to keep her from drinking. He does basically make sure that her day to day life happens and she eats and keeps her company because she'd be really lonely otherwise. So I don't know if he's a villain or a saint, but part of me feels like a villain because I just feel like there's no possible way you think that Wendy is about to go shoot a podcast or she should be in Asbury Park walking around doing photo shoots. It, it, it just makes no sense. But whatever. I mean, I don't know about him, but who I really am like, mm, sis, no, is the publicist. Because at least when they ask the manager, you know, about her mental health and things like that. He was in some ways kind of like truthful about the state. Like if they're why he's just like, I really don't know. You know what I'm saying? Some, you know, or whatever the heck, whatever. But the publicist, Sean, when they asked Sean, she was just kind of like, oh, you know, Wendy is Wendy. Next. No, <laughs> no, there is clearly something wrong and you can't tell me you can't see that. And then I understand that she's sick or whatever is happening, but like the way she's talking to them, the way that the driver and Sean drove around in a circle three times past the Sherry show to go back to the same vape shop to buy the right vape, but Wendy kept saying it wasn't. I'm, I, I guess for me, because I've never been there, I don't understand why they just continuously want to go along with it rather than being like, Wendy needs help. This is beyond what we can really help her with. So whatever. But no, instead. And then the other thing, too, was like the manager was like, oh, but it's just so many such things go on. And what I'm trying to figure out is if all her money is taken away, she has no assets, access to it. How are all you MFs getting paid? Because it's a team, a machine. There's the management. There's this. I, and, I, and, you know, I feel bad because I think that she probably agreed to this documentary because she needed the money because her other assets were froze and she wanted her own, you know, access to some money that wasn't um, froze or in the Wells Fargo Bank. And, you know, the manager said, hey, stop it right now. You know what? Let's talk about this. Where is Wendy Williams documentary? You know what? I couldn't even watch this thing. I grew up in New York City listening to her on WBLS, listening to her on Kiss FM, all these stations as a kid growing up. And I'm like, this woman was laser sharp. She was entertaining. She had a gift of gap. She is one of one. And to watch anything like this that shows her in decline, it's like watching a train wreck happen. And that's like, I can't support it. I can't condone it. It is sad. It's just sad. It's sad for her. It's sad for her family. And I'm just like, a part of me feels she would not want to be seen in this light. I 
I don't think it's okay. I don't support it. So, tune in out. So, I'm watching this Wendy Williams um, What A Mess documentary. And, honestly, I don't feel bad for her. But I feel bad for her. Like, if that makes sense. It gotta make sense. Because I think we all thinking the same thing. Like, this obviously is not a good documentary to have been aired because of her condition. But definitely what we need. Like, this is a tea that needed to be clocked. Okay? I'm going to tell y'all my favorite part. <laughs> y'all, that's really my favorite part. I'm about to use that with every fucking thing. Oh, my God. She's talking about, damn. <laughs> then the second thing is, you know, people around Wendy. Uh, the first person who honestly just, you know, raises, you know, hairs on, on my skin is Will. You know, it's it's clear from the word go that he's in it for the money. He's not there that because he sincerely cares about Wendy. It's very clear that he's um, working in, in cahoots with um, the Guardian, whoever you know this person is. For me, you know, the moment that kind of you know raised an eyebrow was when he first got on camera and he's like um do i look like money um make sure i, I want to make sure that i look like money for me i'm like um for something uh, for uh, a documentary um whose you know subject matter is you know, so serious and so sad um and you know about you know somebody's deteriorating condition why would you want to center yourself in that way why um, why are you insensitive, you know, to this, right? So for me, that was like a red flag. And then um, the second um, red flag for me was um, when he made a comment about Wendy's erratic behavior. I think for anyone watching that documentary, you know, within you know the first you know ten minutes, you can just tell that you know she's off, right? And if you've been living with Wendy and you see all these things and um, and you're not sensitive to that, and you say something like, um, I don't know if there's something special in the water. That's something that somebody who doesn't care, who is not. Um, concerned, you know, would say, um, somebody who's not sensitive to, um, you know, her condition would say. And then what really drove the point further for me was when they did that call with the publicist and they're trying to figure out, um, what Wendy's podcast is going to be about. Um, so after that conversation with the publicist, uh, the producer asked, well, okay, so do you think she's ready? And then, you know, he makes a comment about, um, why is there a doubt? Um, he basically says, um, someone who has done this for 20 years, how could she not be ready? All right, folks. So those were the reaction videos and we've seen people's reactions and from the look, People are not buying it. And you know, the thing about people is that when you're trying to lie to them or you're trying to sell them something that is not true, they're just going to notice. They can sniff it from afar, you know, like this documentary might not be what they're trying to sell to us. So let's get into a quick summary of what the documentary might be about in case you haven't watched it. So the Where is Wendy Williams documentary gives a raw glimpse into the life of the famed TV host during a tough period. It captures Wendy Williams' struggles post the cancellation of her talk show, shedding light on her vulnerabilities, health issues, including a diagnosis of primary progressive aphasia in front on temporal dementia. These are openly discussed for the first time. The documentary also covers Wendy's court-ordered guardianship, offering insight into her life under legal control, split into four episodes totaling four hours. It's available for purchase on platforms like Prime Video and Apple TV. Despite the challenges, Wendy's strength shines through, showcasing her journey from urban radio talk show success. Overall, it's an honest portrayal of Wendy's life, touching on her health battles, personal hurdles, and resilience. So, I can't help but try to laugh when they say 
it's an honest portrayal of Wendy's life. <laughs> like, why aren't people buying it if it's really honest? Just imagine they're trying to sell you something that after so many years, this lady comes out and does a documentary and she doesn't seem like herself. You can just imagine why people aren't buying it. Anyways, let's keep it going. So I took matters into my own hands because something about this Wendy Williams situation just doesn't sit right with me. We've seen too many celebrities get silenced when they start to speak out, especially about the Hollywood elite. It's like we're all experts in celebrity culture at this point, so when someone in the spotlight starts talking, you can bet their careers on the line. So after some digging, here's what I uncovered about Wendy's ordeal. Wendy's outspoken nature might have ruffled some feathers in the industry, leading to efforts to silence her voice and tarnish her reputation. There could be some dark secrets lurking behind the scenes that Wendy knows about, and those in power might be trying to keep them under wraps. Speaking out against the Hollywood elite could have put Wendy's career in jeopardy, leading to the challenges she's facing now. There might be hidden agendas at play, manipulating the narrative and obscuring the truth about Wendy's struggles. The lack of clarity in the documentary could be a deliberate attempt to shoot Wendy from further harm or to keep certain information from reaching the public eye. It is a tangled web of speculation and uncertainty. But one thing's for sure, there's more to Wendy Williams' documentary than meets the eye. Wendy Williams, as we know, has never shied away from speaking her mind, especially when it comes to Hollywood elites. Here's a glimpse into her board journey. Celebrity gossip Marvin, Wendy's talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, catapulted her to fame as she fearlessly dished out juicy celebrity gossip, dissected hot topics, and shared her unfiltered opinions on stars' lives and scandals. Now that, my friend, is one reason why she could be going through all this. Let's keep it going. Feuds and fireworks. Wendy didn't hesitate to engage in public feuds with fellow celebrities like 50 Cent, Method Man, and Omarosa, making waves with her controversial style and readiness to criticize. Proactive interviews. Known for entertaining yet proactive interview style, Wendy asked direct and sometimes uncomfortable questions, leading to memorable moments, especially interviews with Whitney Houston, Lil Kim, and Bobby Brown. Insider insights. Wendy often claimed to possess insider information about celebrities straddling the line between boldness and criticism as she delved into their private lives, occasionally sparking backlash from those she discussed. Mm -hmm. Documentary drama. The recent documentary, Where is Wendy Williams? has stirred controversy with a publicist accusing filmmakers of exploiting Wendy's vulnerabilities. Despite shedding light on her struggles and health issues, it's ignited debate over ethics and exploitation. In essence, Wendy Williams has covered a bold path in the entertainment world, captivating audiences with a fearless approach while sparking division and debate along the way. It seems like Wendy Williams might have ruffled some feathers with her tell-all approach in the past, but here's the kicker. I stumbled upon a similar story involving a former boxer who got silenced when he started spilling the beans. You know the drill. Once they start keeping it real, the powers that be slap on a diagnosis like bipolar disorder or aphasia to shut them up. And let's be real here, we the public ain't exactly equipped to verify this diagnosis. We can't just scroll up to their doorstep and demand answers. So even if Wendy's going through something fishy, what can we do about it? What can any of us do? They've got it all locked down tight, making sure any talk of truth gets brushed off as nonsense. It's a shady game, my friends, and we're just pawns on their board. Before I get into my cloning theory, that's a wrap up for today's video. I get it, things got a bit speculative, but hey, we're living in a modern world and let's face it, shady stuff goes down all the time. These folks, let's just call them them. They've been pulling identity swaps and silencing power players for ages and if you dare to speak out against them, especially if you're in the spotlight, let's just say you're playing a dangerous game. Count yourself lucky if they just analyze you and leave it that way. But let's be real, being cloned ain't exactly winning the jackpot. Because if you're cloned, the real you ain't sticking around. So let's keep our eyes open and our minds sharp. Folks, drop me a comment. And let me know your thoughts on today's wild ride. And if you dug it, smash that like button. Until next time, stay woke, stay real, and keep the mystery alive.